Imagine you were in the white room. Well, I can't, lol. Anyways, while you and I can't imagine it, all of these real life examples and fictional places can. Oh yeah, also all of these aren't exactly like the white room, but I wanted to teach you all of this anyways, with the white room as an example. The white room is a place where it's aiming to raise geniuses from their environment. The question of what happens when someone is put through education since the start of their lifespan is one of those questions that doesn't get answered, but something that the white room does answer. The white room hasn't had much revealed yet, apart from a few minor facts about some of the students and what they've learnt, with Ainakoji saying he has more knowledge than someone would get in a lifetime, and learnt different areas of academics, and even is skilled within fighting and so forth. So is this a real thing in real life? Are there types of places like this in real life? Like, really? We actually do have some, and while it may not be exactly the same, there might be some elements, but nothing that's been recorded is anything like the white room, especially in this modern age. So I think it will be good to learn a few things. Now, the first one you might be thinking of is white room torture as it's stated to be one of the worst, and after three days, it starts to become extremely difficult. There is a punishment which is considered to be dangerous and scary, where the color white is used to deal with punishing prisoners. Yes, there is a punishment called white room torture, where a person is locked in a completely white room, white walls, white door, and even the food served will only be white rice. Even the bathroom and the infrastructure will be completely white in color. There will be a pin drop silence in the cell, where you can only hear your voice. After a person starts living in this room, they soon forget things, sometimes even how their parents looked. Also, this torture was mostly practiced in Iran to make them break down mentally. A prisoner who experienced it said, It got extremely difficult to stay after three days, and to stay in complete silence, it broke me mentally. You even believe a lie that the guard tells you like you lost the person you love the most because of the room, he added. Iran officials believed in the concept that mental pain is more effective than physical pain, and thus implemented this torture on such people who deserve this punishment. Now, this isn't exactly what we are looking for. We want something to, I don't know, change a person, maybe enhance someone's abilities, and so on. Well, in World War II, we have an example of this. The, uh, those guys had a eugenics program from the 1930s, and so on. The Hitler Youth programs were attempts to construct the mind and physical fitness of the German youth to an ideal perfection. Not only that, but they invented some performance-enhancing drug called DIX, which is meth, basically. They invented the DIX, a methamphetamine-based drug that dramatically increased physical abilities. During its tests on inmates from the Sachsenhausen concentration camp, the test subjects managed to walk 90 kilometers slash 55 miles a day carrying a 20 kg slash 44 pound backpack without rest. The war ended before its mass production, however. Well, these are the closest to increasing strength. And now, it seems because Ayanokoji was brought up in the White Room. The White Room taught different curricular activities, which include sciences, liberal arts, martial arts, and other worldly wisdom. The White Room was harsh because it was trying to get the best results possible. Because the White Room's main goal is to bring a genius through nurture. Nurture, which is just an environment you are raised through. Which usually geniuses are nature and are through genes. This is education from birth. If the White Room can produce the best specimens it can and achieve this successfully, Japan itself would experience growth the likes of which the world have never seen before. As far as we know, the White Room never used drugs or anything like that but just very good nutrition, and setting up an environment where all you could do was try to be the best you can be. We know that this was super harsh, however, because of the most successful person in the White Room, Ainakoji, felt fear within the White Room. Failure is the worst thing to be in the White Room. As far as we know, he states that, I knew all about fear, born through pain. I knew the terror and misery of being a loser. I'd seen people destroyed by it before my eyes time and time again. But eventually I stopped feeling fear. Instead, I just felt cold, because I'd come to realize that no matter how much suffering or despair others experience, the same would never happen to me. If you have the means to protect yourself, that's all you need. If you can keep yourself safe from all harm, you win. As you guys who have watched this channel should know this by now, he also used to cry in front of people, stated in volume 2, which is definitely linking to the white room, because he says in front of people a couple times or so. Now, being a failure within the white room, which hasn't been confirmed on what actually happens like, it's an actual death. Well, to debunk anyone thinking this, we know from the anime only scene that some end up breaking down due to harsh conditions. We know from at least from volume 11.5 that Tsukushiro states, Sure enough, it's impossible for you to know where the children who left the facility went. Those children grew up beautifully and contributed to society. If that had happened, there's something to be grateful for. But so far, most of the children raised in that facility have their own problems, and so they cannot be put to good use. They were not last in that environment. Their hearts have already been damaged, so at least they are broken enough that they can't function in normal society, or something like that. In the 4th gen, known as one of the most extreme curriculums, 
This had to be done. Because of this, Anakoji had his own defense mechanism which was formed. Anakoji has a defense mechanism from the White Room. It's the idea that all that matters is winning and anything like that. We see this activate when he is placed in a danger or competitive situation, which is shown through the first three volumes very well. Just with raw education, but even strength, Anakoji was versing pro fighters in the White Room, and it is stated in Year 2 Volume 1 that his results were monstrous. Make sure to subscribe to me if you love this type of content. I have more planned, and I'm trying to hit 10k subs by the end of the year, so please help a man out. Thank you. Not only does the White Room change Anakoji with him adopting a way to cope with the White Room's harsh conditions, the White Room had other gens, and one notable one was the 5th gen which was more social than the 4th gen, because the 4th gen really taught individualism. Then the White Room people changed the next generation to push more pushing towards learning social skills. We see this through Yagami and Ichika's amazing social abilities. Speaking of Yagami, to push the White Room students, they made them want to compete more with putting Anakoshi as a benchmark, someone who was either treated as like a god figure within the White Room, even making people wonder if the White Room just made him up to motivate people. Some disliked him, and one of those people was Yagami. He's like the male version of Kushida, with him having this nice persona, but he's just some Machiavellian white room student behind the mask, which we saw in year 2. I don't want to go too in depth though, and Ichika was one of those people that admired Ainokoji, which we can see in one of her monologues along with her feelings on Yagami. And now, as we can see, the white room has a few aspects I guess maybe a bit different to those real life examples. I find the most accurate to be the white room torture, as the food and making everything white seems more accurate to the white room. Now, we also know that the white room is very unethical and all of that producing low-key messed up people in the head. As you can tell, Anakoji's a bit messed up, with the eyes like his father who is a sociopath. The White Room is very unethical, so are there any more types? We do know from what we know, nothing is exactly like the White Room, but... Not educational, but it's an institution to raise the perfect soldiers. In East Germany, there was an old building, which is 501 Kinderheim. A place to reprogram children to serve under the government. Now let's break down what made this place so unethical and how it executed its goals. The methodology, aka a system of methods used in a particular area of study or activity, they used psychological tricks. One of these which was desensitization or brainwashing. This was meant to produce children to have been purified or catharsis, annihilating any future emotion. This is actually displayed when a former 511 Kinderheim student can't even have a true relationship. His own child wants to commit suicide because of the lack of love. Love is lacking because of the previous experiments in 501 Kinderheim. 501 also basically had them like rats. They made it so the kids would grow from selfishness and fear to hatred and fighting with each other. They beat and abused them as negative reinforcement to make them used to having no emotions so that they could figure it out to escape different situations. To lose their sense of self and the feeling of being able to resist any control put upon them, they were also not allowed to use any names and were instead given numbers. All children were detached and had no interest in making friends or socializing. Eventually, Johann Lieber joins the facility. This boy hated everything about this facility, and all he did was observe this facility, and our inherent hatred was created when people gather. He just poured a little oil on it. The entire facility after that had broke down itself. It's known as one of the most secret things in the Monster series, and people prefer not to talk about it, as it's in the past. In Monster, these children that had been let out of 501 Kinderheim that survived, were so deviant that some were criminals, had trouble with human relationships, or followed Johan himself. Wami's House, an institution founded by Quilishwami, or known as Wadari, is a place to nurture gifted children. An orphanage mainly founded in Winchester, England. When it started, Wadari as an inventor naturally found the idea of creating more efficient people pretty interesting, and fun, even. Mainly a place to educate, but this changes when a boy named L. Lawliot joined Wami's house. He had noticeable talents at a young age, being able to prevent the bombings that would have caused World War III. At just age 8, L. tested his brain within the orphanage, and eventually found a case to solve. Once he figured out who it was, he honestly really enjoyed it. L. when talking to Wami house students, said that he did it as a hobby and no moral idea nor justice behind it. Watery states that he and L would continue to work after this, and L becomes a successful detective. Wami's house turns into a place where they train kids to become detectives. We learn in the BB murder case, which the narrator Mello, a Wami house student, says that Watery had noticed the incredible talents of L, and from his perspective, as an inventor, he wanted to create a backup. L is known as the world's greatest detective. His own deductive abilities are high valued by world government officials. He's able to control all of Interpol and has a lot of connections to different law enforcement. Mello explains this as L knew that his death would increase the crime rate all over the world by a dozen percentage. But what if they could copy him? Could they make a backup? In the first generation of trying to cultivate future successful detectives, or named as L's successors, we are told also from Mello's thoughts about his thoughts on doing this would really lead to bad results. 
But even for a genius like Wataru, creating a fake L was easier said than done. Even for Nier and I, who said to be the closest to L, the more we tried to be like him, the closer we got, the further away he was, like chasing a mirage. So I hardly need to tell you what it was like when Whammy's house was first founded, when he was still experimenting. The first child, A, could not handle the pressure of living up to L, and took his own life. And the second child, Beyond Birthday, was brilliant and deviant. B stood for backup. Miller says, I hardly need to tell you what it was like initially, while Watery was still experimenting. Chasing L was hard. The further you try to be like him and the closer you were, the further away he was. Miller also says, it's obvious what Watery was like when Watery was experimenting. Implying the environment was toxic, was as a pretense, because we know that as years go on, and the new generations come in, Lammy's house is less toxic in a way. Mello was implying these first experiments were terrible. These early experiments caused someone like B to exist. This environment was competitive. It's like constantly chasing acknowledgement. You are supposed to be competitive to be chosen as the successor. A and B are referred to as being from the first generation of L successors, while Mello and Nier are described as being from the fourth generation. Later, Wami's house formed to more positive and a loving environment. Some Wami's house students have extraordinary lives after being in Wami's house or still being part of it. It seems a lot more loving than it's described from Mello's view, at least around the near rock. Some orphans use aliases rather than their real names, which are kept secret. In addition to these aliases, some notable graduates are assigned a letter by Wateri. Roger Ruvi runs the orphanage while Wateri travels with L. And when Nier takes over as the new L, Roger takes over the role as Wateri. All of these experiments are interesting for sure. These education facilities are intriguing too. However, the White Room still hasn't been that explored yet. In Volume 0, we will see more and how the White Room students are more of a pawn towards a goal for politics within Japan.